الحمد لله الذي ألف بالإسلام بين قلوب المؤمنين وعوجب اتحاد وحرم تفرقا في كتابه المبين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله هو الذي بعثه في العميين رسول منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي دلال مبين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الدعين إلى سبيل ربهم بالحكمة والمعيدة حسنة فرد الله عنهم أجمعين عما بعد فيا عباد الله أوسكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله تعالى وتعاته That is our praise is due to Allah who has united the hearts of the believers with Islam and he has obligated us to remain united and he has forbidden that we become separated in his book which is most high We witness that none deserves worship except Allah who's one alone, he has no partners, no associates. There is nothing like or comparable to him. And we witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and his messenger, whom he raised from among those who were illiterate in scripture. He recited upon them the signs of God and purified them. And he taught them the book and the wisdom when before this they were in manifest error. O oh Allah, send prayers to peace, the high exaltation upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions who call to the way of their Lord with wisdom and excellent preaching. Call Allah ta'ala fi Quran al Kareem. A'udhu billahi min ash rajim هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو علم الغيب والشهادة وهو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن محمد العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون Brothers and sisters, we're going to continue this week, inshallah, looking at the last two verses of Surah Al Hashr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about Himself. and describing his attributes. We discussed previously what an Elah is and the different ways that men 
take things and objects of worship of worship other than Allah. And this goes into Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, which is two of the most often repeated attributes of Allah. And as I mentioned previously, our teacher, among many teachers, but the teacher that had the most profound impact on Islam in the United States of America in the 20th century, Imam Warathuddin Muhammad, and may Allah forgive him his sins and give him the paradise. He said, if you want to know about the attribute of Rahman, he said, go read the whole chapter. He said, read the whole chapter 55. Because that whole chapter is about Allah's all-encompassing mercy. And Allah says, Wasi'a, Wasi'a, Kulli Shay, Bil Ilmi, Wa Rahma. That He expands everything in knowledge and mercy. So as human beings are understanding of ourselves, our understanding of creation, our understanding of God is, ex is, is, is expanded. One, by knowledge, getting to know, study, and understanding God, Allah, and two, by mercy, Allah's mercy and compassion upon us. And then Ar-Rahim, Allah's mercy that is particular. His mercy that's particularly for his servants. It's a special mercy. It's a very special mercy that God gives to those who accept him and who submit to him. Then Allah says, Al Malikul Qudusu. That he is the sovereign. That he is in control. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we have experiences in life that shape our understanding, that shape our perception. Really, all of our perception is shaped by our experiences in life. And our understanding is influenced by our experiences in life. And sometimes Allah will let you have an experience so you can understand one of his attributes and that experience is not the total explanation of that attribute. That experience lets you conceptualize that attribute in a very real and meaningful way in your own life. Allah is El Malik. He is the king, the sovereign, the one who holds dominion. Dominion. Now, now realize, this comes right after who Allahu Ladi la ilaha illa huwa. There's nothing worthy of worship except Him. He knows what you conceal. He knows what you reveal. We discussed this. He knows what's witnessed and what's not witnessed. We discussed this linguistically. Then. Right after that, he's merciful and compassionate because as soon as you find out, and for many reasons, but one of the things is, as soon as you find out God knows what you do in secret, you better start reflecting on the compassion and mercy of God. You better start getting ready to ask for forgiveness and ask God for his mercy and ask him to blot out our iniquities and blot out our sins and forgive us. And even if it's not a big thing, even if it's just... Uh, 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 a small transgression. We all transgress gress, and we all must ask for the mercy and compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only, the only human being, the only perfect human being after the Quran started to be revealed was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's no longer with us. So with his absence, all of us are fallible. And all of us are flawed. 
And there is no revelation to correct us on the spot. When the companions used to make a mistake, revelation would come down immediately. If, if they didn't know, if they made some decision that they didn't know uh, because it was unprecedented, as soon as it happened, revelation comes down. When they lied on Aisha radiallahu anha in the affair of the lie. As soon as the lie went around and nobody knew and everybody began to doubt, revelation came down. Well, we don't have that. We don't have that anymore. So we don't have that guidance anymore. But we do have the life example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that we can try our best to implement the Quran in our life. And implement his model in our life to get the best results. Of this, of, this, of this life that we live in. So after Allah reminds us these things, we come into, he, he's at El, El Malik. Malikul Muluk. That he, that's, that Qalqala was too heavy. But he is the king, he is the sovereign of all those who perceive themselves to have any sovereignty. He is the sovereign. He is the one who has control. And when it says Al-Malik, it indicates that God is the undisputed authority and is entitled to give commands and receive obedience. Personal experiences. This past Monday, as I mentioned to you last week, a relative of mine, young lady, 27 years old, she had a brain aneurysm. She had a brain aneurysm, and if it had a burst, it may have killed her. Many of my family members flew into town. And as we sat in the waiting room, it was abundantly clear to us that we were not in control. The surgery started at 7 a.m. and was supposed to end at 7 p.m. The surgery didn't end till 11 p.m. 16 hours of surgery. Every minute having faith in God, but also realizing if it was God's decision that it was time for his servant to return back to him. His servant would have returned back to him. Completely helpless. Allah has blessed man's knowledge to progress to the point where they took this artery right here, this one. The one that you feel your pulse. They took this artery out of her arm. Put it in her neck. And bypassed the area of the artery that was had the aneurysm in it. Introduced a new supply of blood to the brain. Allah blessed her to come through. But in matters of life and death, and don't think that the doctors didn't realize they weren't in control either. Because any procedure that you go into, the doctor will tell you Even if it's routine, 
you have to sign a document listing all of the